Bwana asifiwe. I've had a nice time to rest and relax. And uh, if you look at me, I'm more refreshed. Bwana asifiwe. And uh, I think those people who um, organized that they believe knew very well that someone needs to take leave. So even business people who are here, praise the Lord. <laughs> Learn to take leave. Hata kama ni wiki moja, unapomzika. It's one way of being rejuvenated so that you can also serve well and also do well. Amen. Number two is to say that uh, we are launching our theme for these four months from the month of January all the way to April. We have been taking a journey of uh, uh, three sessions every year, and we are starting on a journey of daring faith. Last year, we finished with keeping hope alive. And as we sought the Lord and prayed, the Lord spoke to us that one way of keeping hope alive is to have a daring faith. So therefore, we have a journey of four months where we have organized for you a nice uh, Bible study material here that will guide you as you go through moments of daring faith. And as you dare faith, you are daring God. Aisha can hear an amen. amen. Number two, as a session, we made a resolution to start what we are calling a Sukari Presbyterian Online Church. What we have today is online service. There's a difference between an online service and an online church. Online church is where we will be recording short sermons, about 15 minutes as short service, and now it shall be uploaded on YouTube so that you people can follow us on the online church. It is one way of being able to reach the whole world. Not now with the whole service recorded, but just a short, a short sermon, about five minutes, some music, and that way we'll have another virtual church. Simzema, amen. Bwana asifiwe. And so we will be doing, um, uh, this month we'll be able to present it, I'm sure by uh, early next, uh, this week, you will see it up, either on Wednesday, we will we'll, we'll do a notice, so that you start subscribing to the online church, and inviting people all over the world to join us, as we start a journey of reaching out to the whole world, as a church. Buona sana. And so what we shall do as the pastoral team, will be recording a great uh, sermons, and we are starting with Hebrews 11. We will start with this theme of daring faith. Not what we teach here on Sunday, but what we want to tell everyone in the world apart from within a service set up. Praise the name of the Lord. So we want to welcome you to that great journey of uh, Sukari Presbyterian Online Church called Spock. Can you say Spock? Spock. Amen. <laughs> Sukari Presbyterian Online Church. We want now to uh, dedicate and... Um, launch the theme, and order us, all of us to read together, what is the theme verse? Yes. Hebrews 11 and verses. What does it say? Administer justice and gain what was promised. And what is the theme slogan? Yes. Daring faith. Amen? We want to have people who can dare God, dare the world through their faith. Let us pray for uh, and, and launch this theme, even as we pray for the word. God Almighty, we thank you so much for taking us through a journey of four months last year of keeping hope alive. And we thank you that many of us who are downcast were encouraged and strengthened. And now, Lord, as we start this new year, we want to have a daring faith, faith that will take us to greater heights. And our prayer, oh Lord, that these Bibles are the materials and the study shall have in our districts and our groups who have an impact in our lives as we dare you, even as we dare to apply our faith in life. Lord, we pray that your blessing be upon us. Even now as we launch this theme today, we pray for your visitation. We pray for you to speak to us. This is our prayer of faith through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we launch the theme in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So after this, kindly, uh, elders will, and the deacons will collect their Bible study materials. 
They are right up in the boardroom. Please don't go away before you pick so that you can start the journey of daring faith. Amen. Amen. Now, the journey we are taking of daring faith is a journey where we are looking at the definition in the book of Hebrews 11 and 1, verse 1, which says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, evidence or manifestation or proof of things not seen. When we talk about this faith, it is faith as a foundation, as an assurance. When we talk about faith, is that which naturally grounds us and builds hope in us in God who lives and reigns forever and ever. Born as if he were. So when you're inviting us to a daring faith, we're inviting us to an assurance, to confidence, a sense of conviction and persuasion about God. As we sought the Lord, we felt that our people in this country have a challenge with being convinced, have a challenge with assurance. Some have no confidence in God. Some are not persuaded that that the one they believed in is able, like Paul said, I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. That's the conviction we are going through these four months. What is today? Today, as a verb, is to be brave. And we are calling us to brave. As a verb, as, it is, as a noun, it is a brave act that you do. Whatever it is that you do without a bravery becomes then that dare. It is to be brave enough to do something that is difficult. I'm asking us this year to do something you have never done. Something that is difficult you have always contemplated, you have always thought about. This is the year to dare God. Amen. Even sometimes some things that are dangerous. But you do them because you know who is holding your hands. Hallelujah. And when we say dare, it simply means that you are willing to risk your faith by believing in God. The other day we were studying the other quarter about Daniel, isn't it? And how they dared even the kings of that time. Martin Luther says that faith is a living Daring confidence in God. That's Martin Luther. So sure and certain that a man could stake his life on it a thousand times. Not just once. Faith is living, daring confidence in God's grace. So sure that a sat that, that so sure and certain that a man could stake his life on it a thousand times. Not once, not two times. Amen. That's one of our great fathers of faith. Again, a writer who wrote a book called Think Great, Be Great, called Lila Gifter Akita says, daring faith is daring life. Daring life is graceful living. And graceful living is fullness of life. So I'm calling us to a daring faith, a daring life. Hey, Amen? <laughs> and that life will be full of grace of God and there will be fullness of life. Why is Christianity not having fullness in our lives? It's because our faith sometimes is not as daring as it should be. So therefore, my dearly beloved, what does it mean to have a daring faith? It means to have faith against all odds. When everyone is going right, you go left. Daring faith Seems it is to have faith even when it is dangerous. When you can lose your marriage because of your faith. When you can lose your job, you can lose your business and say, yes, I know even if I lose this, I have another alternative that is brought by God through faith. Amen. Faith is when you are able to risk your popularity. And by the way, God has not called us to become cerebs. Oh, amen. God has called us to become men and women of faith, who are faithful. It means to have faith even when signs are showing you you may not make it. 
You know very well, it's a difficult time to start a business in Kenya because of taxation. And even now they want to tax even what you farm and you sell and pets. You can already see the direction we are going. So <laughs> they are coming right where you are and they are sending people to come and check. What do you do every other day? So it's a difficult time to start something new. But what daring faith means is that even when signs are showing otherwise, you can go and do it. Why? Because you are daring God who says he is faithful. Aisha can hear an amen. Daring faith is being ready to trust God and to do extraordinary things in this life. And finally, daring God, daring faith is to dare God. You know, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told the king, listen to this statement. The God we believe in is able to save us from this fire. But even if he does not, did you hear this? Even if we will not worship your gods, who did they dare? Semen you query. Who did they dare? It is God. Ata wa kama hauta tu wako wa mungu sisi atu tafanya nini? Ha tu ta budu miungu mingine. And of course, what did God do? He showed up physically, not in the spirit. Aisha kani an amen. The fourth man came right into the fire physically. So I'm taking us to a journey, members of this congregation, and those watching us online, a journey of daring faith that dares to show up. Amen. I want to tell us this day. You know when people hear faith, faith, they think they are not part of that faith. Hiyo ni yakina pastor. Hiyo ni yakina elder. Hiyo ni yale wase wanaombanga masamengi. Yapana, let me tell the truth. Faith is not for those who are perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some people in the line of the hall of faith in the book of Hebrews 11 were weak people. Hebrews mentioned people who had glaring flaws. Indeed, in spite of their flaws, God used them. And situations were changed. Among them were the ones we read this morning. One of them who was mentioned is Gideon, then Barak, then Samson, then Jephthah, then David, Samuel, and other prophets. And these people who are mentioned here in this portion that we read were people who had struggles in their lives. Let's start with Gideon. Gideon was a cowardly man. Mwoga. Coming from the weakest tribe of Manasseh among the tribes of Israel. By the way, even a sub-tribe. You know a sub-tribe? Are we, are we together? And physically, he was a man who had no good faith because he believed what he could see. That's why he was telling God, Mungu kama ni wewe, hii mati iko hapa ikuwe na maji, kungine kusikuwe na maji. Alafu Mungu anafanya anasema, ah, hiyo ndai isi kwa kwa Mungu. Basi wacha tufanya hivi. Wacha kule kungine kuwe na maji na hii mati ikuwe dry. Huyo ni mtu ambaye hana imani. Are we together? But the man called by God hit 135,000 soldiers of the Midianites only with 300 people on his side. A man who was weak from the weakest tribe, but by being used by God, he conquered. Aisha can hear amen. Amen? The second man is Barak. Barak was a man who struggled with masculinity. Hi, man. He could not go to war unless there was a woman called Deborah. Nay, na mambia, you go to war. You know this woman was very courageous. Where do you come again? Usipo pigana, the glory will come to a woman, and then akasema, for the sake of my masculinity, watch a ningangane too. You know, even with his weakness, he went and overcame, and he beat the enemies. Who is that? The other man is Samson, a strong man, yes, but this man had a problem with women. He struggled with lust. Although he was a great man, he would pull down things and uh, even uh, cities and he would fight Amalekites. Once he came before a woman, he was helpless. Are we together? Am I speaking to someone? Hallelujah. So helpless. <laughs> so helpless. The other man here is Jephthah. 
Jephthah was a son of a harlot. Can you imagine? A harlot. So he was an outcast. By the way, he was thrown out of their home. He only was brought back by his brothers when they needed victory. And he went and fought. And he was also a quick person in what we call vowing. Because he said, Mungu nikirudi nyumbani. The first thing to fight me, I will sacrifice for you. You know, you know I thought, I, maybe he was a kikuyu man. Hallelujah. Who, when they come home, the first thing to, fight, to meet you is a ningombe ama nimbuzi. But unfortunately, the only daughter. What am I saying to us? People who are weak. David, a great king, but a man who struggled a lot with adultery and even struggled to cover up. A man who was great, by the way, a man after God's own heart, but had weaknesses. And I can go on and on. Samuel was a man who was a great, one of the greatest uh, prophets. But this man had a problem to raise his own family in godliness. Although he himself was brought up in the house of the Lord, his children, if you read the book of uh, 1 Samuel 8, 1 to 3, turned away to dishonest gain, to bribes and perverted justice. So these are people who had flaws. But you know what? They found their way in the hall of faith. So are you here? And you are saying, hii mambo ya faith ya anasema huyu mchungaji ni yao. Wewe tuombe na imani yako, utusambazie. Hapana. Everyone here is qualified. Hallelujah. Why are we qualified for this kind of faith? Because the faith we are talking about is not faith as a gift. We have two kinds of faith. One faith is the faith that is a gift. The other faith is a general faith. Faith as a gift, hiyo weka kando, hiyo ni kipawa ya mungu. Hanu wale wase wanaendanga wanaenda mahali, wanachukua mafuta, wanachukua maji, wanaika kwa gardener inatembea. Wee jaribu. These are guys who can go to a hotel without money, and by the time they finish, ah, habari ya pasta, ntalipa hiyo. Wee jaribu. Utachonga via? Because that is faith as a gift. I'm talking about general faith. General faith. All of us seated here have ever entered a matatu. Nani haja ingia matatu hapa? Haja nione. All of us have used matatus. Let's use the matatus of sukari here. I don't know what they are called. Kewa what? Kewa? Suka. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever they are called. <laughs> I, do, I have never heard of any of you here enter a matatu here and tell that man ambaya nalipisha. Mimi nitalipa ni kifika tao. Anyone who has ever done that? At in Kifika town, you nalipa. You people pay even before you get to Endani. <laughs> Why? You have general faith that you get to town. Ay, 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 ay. Amen. You have general? That's the faith I'm talking about. The same way you enter Amatatu and you go to town and you don't say mbaka nifike ndiyo nilipe is a faith I want us to translate as a daring faith. Ay, 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 ay. Amen. So what God is calling us to do, members of this congregation and those watching us online, just like the men of faith who are weak, Number one, they conquered kingdoms. There are kingdoms before you that God wants you to conquer. There are things that have stood before your presence for many years. There are big mountains that have been for you. Through faith this year, you will conquer them. Is, there, is anyone faith getting strengthened? Amen. If they rooted armies, you can do it. If you overcame enemies, you can do it. Why? You don't need anything else, just a daring faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, the text that we read says they administer justice. We are looking at people who can use their faith to do their work. I wish I can hear an amen. amen. You know, many of us go to work carnally, we only come to church by faith. We are looking at people who will go to the court system as a judge. You go to your shop as a shopkeeper. You go to your business, a business person, and you administer justice. You offer leadership through faith. We are looking at people whose faith will be practiced. If faith was practiced in this country, there will be no corruption. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you together? But what do we do on Sunday? We are men and you know faith. On Monday, we mungu ka goja hapa. Ndakuchukua Friday. Waja kwa ta ni ngangane na hawa mikora. 
wa serikali. You know, no, that's not what we want to do. <laughs> are we together? As you go to teach in that class, you are going there administering justice in God. So faith must be practiced in your workplace. Aisha can hear an amen. Number three, through faith, they gained what was promised. Let me tell you people. God has already promised you what you need in this world. Hiya. Even what you pray for. I know some of you, I was, I was narrated yesterday, was telling me that her dream car is a Lexus 570. That one is already provided. <laughs> Hallelujah. All you need is faith to get it. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Can I hear an amen? amen? Some of us here have been trusting God for a wife. That wife is already in Kenya. Thank you, Joka. Amen. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Say amen. <laughs> a husband. All you require is to know, has the Lord promised? The Lord has promised good to me. That one. As long as the first part you know that God has promised good to you, so he has done it. Hallelujah. All you need is to go and get it by your daring faith. Why? Because he who promised is faithful. Number three, the, these men and women in the Hall of Fame overcame persecution. Bible says they shut the mouth of lions. They quenched fiery flames. They even escaped at the edge of the sword, whose weakness were turned into strength. Supernaturally, God overcame for them the enemy. Members of this congregation, through faith, God will overcome for you your enemies. Through your faith, that faith that you have, you will be able to overcome persecution. Like the way he did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the Lord is here for you. I don't know how many of us here feel hated, abused, rejected, useless, low esteem. Oh, name all those enemies. The Lord is calling you to a journey of overcoming that. Amen? And finally, <laughs> you may not like this. These men and women also suffered for their faith. I know there's no amen to that. But you know, in this country, you may not suffer for your faith by being beheaded. It doesn't happen in Kenya. It may happen in some countries in this world. In Kenya, no. But you know, you are going to face some, some jeers and some flogging. Young people who are here. Someone who will tell you, well, una, una kama mama yako. And you know, for a man, kwa ambiwa hivu ni kama natukanwa. Lakini kwa unakaa kama nani, you know, in the first place. You can only be like your mother or your father or whatever it is. So you see Matusi. Hello? <laughs> but you know the way it is presented? <laughs> the way it is presented, it is in a dictatorial manner, isn't it? We go through chains of oppression and imprisonment. Some were put to death by stoning. Some were killed by the sword. Some went as destitute, persecuted. You know when you, when you, 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 are, you can get services in, this, in our government within five, one week according to the service charter, it stays for many years without getting, that is persecution. Many of us are closing businesses because of your faith in God. That is persecution. Hello? That's persecution. You say, because of my faith, this deal is not right. And I'm looking at members of the congregation who will turn down deals from evil people. Hello? I may lose some tithe. But I would rather lose my tithe than lose you. Oy. Amen. <laughs> because once you lose your faith, you are lost. And they wandered in mountains. I wish you have ever seen a woman being chased out of her house or running away the way they wander all over without a place to go. Their parents died. They have to go maybe to Mwehoko here and get like a small house. Someone who was living in a big home here in Sukari, anavuka kiuliva, semeni kiuliva. Anapata kanyuma kadogo, ama anavuka hile ingine, anaenda gedorai. Someone who was living in, a, in comfort. That is what the Bible talks about here, wandering in deserts and mountains. Difficulties. 
Why? Because of their faith. So I'm looking at people who are courageous enough to say, no, I can't do this because of their faith. Bonus, if you will. And as I end, I want to say this. Faith is not for extraordinary people. It is for those who just dare to have it. Amen? Faith is not about us. It's about the God we believe in. I may have little faith. And I've told you on this pulpit again. The only one time the disciples of Jesus Christ asked Jesus to increase their faith, what did he tell them? If you have faith as literal as a mustard seed. So members of this congregation, I'm not asking for an increment of faith. That is a useless prayer. Jesus said you don't need that. If you have faith as small as a mustard, you can tell this mountain to move from here and be implanted in the ocean. It happens. So I'm not praying for anyone to have an increment of faith here. All I'm praying is that our faith is strengthened. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That we become daring. Faith is not only about this world. The Lexus F 570. You know, the, uh, which is other beautiful car that people desire. Uh -huh. And I to add the uh, Range Rover autobiography. You know, you know. You know, there are those big things that people desire, a big house, a big mansion. Members of this congregation, God is not just calling us to faith for material things only. It is faith for eternity. Amen. Look at these people. Bible says some of them never received what they asked for. They died watching. Amen. My mother died a poor woman, but I am rich. Amen. She kept waiting for riches that never came. She died a woman who was poor. But what, what is happening today? When she is gone, I am a wealthy man. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's not about you. God can even bless your generations. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So members of the congregation, let's not look at, let us not just look at today. Let's look at the future. Amen. Amen. I want to end by the words of Rick Warren on daring faith. He says, when God asks you to do the impossible, it is because he wants to stretch your faith. So many na mimi. When God asks you to do the impossible, it is because he wants to stretch your faith. That is requiring the book we read together. Let us pray. Dear God, our loving Father, as we start a journey, of daring faith. It's not about us. It's about you. So Lord, I pray that you awaken us to that special, ordinary faith that will be daring. Look at your servants, O oh Lord. They are going through misery, pain. They are going through despair. Some of them, Lord God, might be almost giving up. But Father, we pray that in us, faith will be strengthened that we can dare you as we wait on you. So, Father God Almighty, this is our year. Despite all the information that is there, we are heavenly. We trust in you, O oh God. So walk with us through a time of daring you. For this is our prayer of faith through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen, amen and amen. Let's do a song.